Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here, really. Uh, it's not my first time in Toronto, but um, not my first time in Canada, neither. Um, we are very excited because um, we really want to, to, to do the, some links between France and Canada. And uh, this is one of uh, the great milestones to be here today and to present what we're doing at the, at the Forum d'Avignon, which sounds very, very French but it's definitely an international perspective. And today, I just want to put some emphasis on uh, what is the cultural and creative industries sectors worldwide and what are the specific things that you can um, find in France. So you, you will have, I hope, after this presentation, a global overview um, of um, culture and creative industries. And you will see that it's definitely not the cherry on the cake, but it's a big cake um, that we're going to dis discuss today. And I would be, of course, delighted to answer your questions and to make this as interactive as we, as we can because it's really about um, enterprising culture and uh, make project alive. So let's, uh, let's start. Uh, so the Forum d'Avignon is, as I just said, um, an international think tank working on the links between culture, the economy, and the innovation. Sounds uh, strange, but there's no other uh, think tank in the world uh, working on, the, the, on those three uh, links and making these people uh, meet. Um, we do two things, as we are a think tank and a do tank. The think tank part is doing a lot of studies, international studies on street perspective, culture financing and economic models, innovation and digital issues, and cultural attractiveness of um, territories. And we also organize um, international meetings, always with something like between 30 and 40 different countries coming together um, just to make new projects about culture, um, creative industries, and their links with the innovation and the economy sectors. We've been doing, in 10 years, 12 um, international meetings. People uh, in Europe call us the Davos of culture, but we are very smaller. And this is, I don't know if you know, the, uh, the very famous um, cartoonist Plantu, who made this, um, this cartoon uh, in one of our international meetings. In the international meetings, we gather philosophers, um, prime ministers, amazing artists, movie director, um, great architects, really from many different countries, and all those uh, mix-up of people makes very interesting um, talking and very interesting um, ideas and projects. So in 10 years, we made around 12 uh, international meetings, six in France, five, uh, five in, the, um, in Germany, one in Spain, and the first to come will be in Toronto, um, to be out of Europe, the first one, and will be next uh, September 20, 28th and 29th. So I hope you will be, it will be here in Koruske, actually. So I hope you will uh, all be there um, with a startup uh, award to be, um, to be shown. I just wanted to, to, to give you two little videos. The first one is one minute videos just to, to, to show you uh, who we are. And then after one, I will show you one, um, which is, um, I mean, just put the, the first one on and uh, we'll get to. Um it's so cool. Yes, what is very, what is very important is that um, 
when we make all those people together, we don't have a specific ideas uh, um, um, at the beginning of, um, uh, of the meetings. What we really, and what is very interesting is that every time, every year, we have, let's say, dozens and dozens of real projects that um, comes out of these international meetings because the, the people that we make together are not supposed to meet in real life. So this is a unique place where people who shall not meet do meet and then they make really interesting projects based, mostly based on the culture and um, creative uh, sectors. Uh, the second very short video I want, to, um, uh, I want to show you was to see you where we are from and uh, what happened when we started to talk about uh, the links between culture and the economy. This seems really obvious here in, uh, in Canada. But I can tell you that uh, in Europe, uh, it's not that easy. And the links are still something, the, a, a, tricky, a tricky topic. So I just wanted to, to, to show you how we present this, this, um, this and this viewed um, many, 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 many uh, uh, thousands of times in, um, uh, on the internet. And just uh, we made the, uh, the, the English version one, so you, you can have a, a look at it. It's a midsummer afternoon in the Tuileries Garden in Paris. You are sitting in the sunshine amongst the screams of children chasing each other. And you are terribly thirsty. You walk to the refreshment stand in the nearby Concorde Square and you start ordering lemonades, one by one. The first one fills you with unspeakable delight. The second is a little less enjoyable. The third saturates you with sugar to the point that you have to stop drinking. Without knowing it, you've just demonstrated a fundamental law of economics called the principle of diminishing marginal utility. The more you consume a good, the less pleasure you get out of it. This applies to all categories of goods. Well, almost. Because a few yards from where you're standing, a string quartet is playing a piece by Schubert. You know nothing about classical music, but you know this piece because a music teacher had you listen to it back in junior high. As you walk closer to the band, you recognize the trills that had so moved you back then. Unlike Lemonade, this second experience of Schubert brings you more joy than the first one. It will bring you even more joy when you listen to it for a third time. Schubert will perhaps make you enjoy Beethoven, who in turn will lead you to Brahms. You place 10 euros in the cello case and take a copy of the quartet's CD. Music and other cultural goods are the exceptions to the rule of diminishing marginal utility. The more music you listen to, the more books you read, the more museums you visit, the greater the satisfaction you get out of them. But it all has to begin somewhere. In this case, it is the state that kicked off the process by giving you a first dose of Schubert in school. And it is thanks to that first free dose that the French economy now benefits from the 10 euros you just injected into it. At that point, you spot two American tourists who seem a bit lost. They ask for directions to the Sacré-Cœur church in Montmartre. You answer in English that it is quite far away. They smile and compliment you on your colorful accent. You are visibly French, which right away makes you appear interesting and sophisticated. Now, to what do you owe this prestige, if not to hundreds of years of French culture? Great cuisine, the films of the Nouvelle Vague, libertine literature. The authors of these creations crafted objects that contributed to the image of France, which you are enjoying today, standing here on the Concorde Square without having paid a penny for it. You still don't know it, but you are benefiting from what in economics is called a positive externality. The free market being unable to take externalities into account, it is the state that has to gauge their importance through public funding. The three of you then take a taxi across town all the way to the freshly refurbished Sacré-Cœur church. You pay the driver and pick a café for the marvelous terrace overlooking the monument, and you spend your evening drinking complicated cocktails. The Tuileries lemonades, the Schubert CD, the taxi, the cocktails. Would you have purchased all those goods if you hadn't been near public spaces that were worth visiting? 
by paying the gardeners who maintain the paths of the Tuileries, by widening the pavement of the Concorde, by renovating the roof of the Sacré-Cœur, the state attracted you to these places and triggered purchases that you probably would not have made otherwise. Your money enriched shopkeepers that will in turn use it to purchase goods. This is what is called the multiplier effect of cultural investment. In just half a day, you have illustrated three major economic principles that every year justify spending public funds on culture. Okay, so this is really, you know, what we what we had to show to to show what are the links between culture and the economy and how they are. Uh, people can understand that why culture and investment in culture is really um, needed, and this little video really helped us to do that. So back to um, uh, back to uh, what uh, what I said pre previously, and to, to, to the presentation uh, I wanted to, to show you today. Um, it's all about culture, and it's all about content, and especially here when we talk about digital issues and innovation. I think um, we thought it was. Um, very important to talk about the content and what we're doing and what this creative and uh, cultural um, economy is um, worldwide. So to, to present you this, uh, we, we've been, as I told you, doing a lot of international studies and we're working with uh, EY um, um, on these topics. And then we have, uh, I'm going to present a, a couple of numbers and uh, you have one for France, one for Europe, and one worldwide. I'm gonna start with a worldwide figure so you have um, an idea of what it represents. Do you guys know, uh, hope I have an idea of the GDP percentage or the, um, the revenue uh, of cultural and creative industries worldwide? Any, any idea? Depending on the perimeter, it's between four and six percent of GDP. And it is, um, I'm going to, um, to, tell, to give you more, but it represents, and this is why I said uh, depending on the perimeters, because what we have analyzed here is uh, those 11 sectors. Um, architecture, books, movies, radio, visual arts, TV, performing arts, music, newspapers, gaming, and advertising. And we've analyzed well, what's going on in the five global uh, regions with a lot of interviews in uh, 55 countries. So, yes, it's 2,250 US billion dollars. So it's really a big, big um, industry. It's 1.5 more than the telecom services. Usually people really don't have this in mind. So when I say it's all about culture, it's all about content, you're gonna see that's really true. Worldwide, it's almost 30 million people who are working in the creative and cultural industries. And uh, what is also interesting is that those sectors are, you know, looking forward and uh, jobs that really people are happy to be involved in because the culture is future. Culture is really making the future um, better. So it's, once again, 30 million people is, is quite a lot. 1% of the world's active population. Um, we're gonna see that uh, in, in all the different sectors, it's uh, much less than that. On the um, top three of active uh, population of a million jobs, visual arts are the first one, then music, then the books industry. Once again, people usually, when, when we say what's uh, what the first one, people don't say visual arts, they say movie. But it's not even on the street first ones. And uh, in terms of revenue, it's TV, then visual arts, then newspapers um, and magazines. So you see that the global powers are really important ones. In terms of trading places, where it is, you have um, the traditional powers, North America and Europe, and you see that uh, in Europe it's um, 709 billion uh, revenue. It's um, in North America, 620 billions. In uh, Asia, 
which is definitely a massive leader, uh, 743 billion for 12.7 million jobs. And uh, we have Latin America and Caribbean and Africa and the Middle East, which is definitely growing and it's very interesting. We have much deeper details um, uh, on that, but it's really interesting and you can see, of course, on the, on the website the, um, all the, um, all the sp specific data about that. But really, this is important to have all those regions and to understand what creative and cultural sectors represent all over uh, the world. What is a digital impact? Um, we wanted to focus on four of them. The first one is definitely about diversity. What we, will, what we want to focus on is um, culture is an amazing lever for diversity. And those, the digital platforms do have pro provide uh, access to um, 15 million music titles, for example, almost 33 million books. So this is really something that has never happened before. But there are, on the other side, you will, we will see later that uh, it's not only good, the digital revolution is not only good things for um, culture and creative industry. In terms of um, disruption, um, you all know that um, music industries and uh, all other um, creative industries, been, the sales have been really cut off um, dramatically. But uh, what is funny is that now um, the CCI, the cultural and creative industry, do strike back. We see now bookstore reopening everywhere. We see digital shift is moving to physical, another new wave of uh, physical um, shift. And it's not, I mean, to, uh, to make fun or just to see, I mean, we, we found one or two. It's really uh, a real trend. Uh, that, we, that we've seen um, in, um, in many different countries. The next D of the four Ds is uh, devices. Uh, as you know, cultural content has a definitely uh, direct impact on the, sale of, on the sales of um, electronic devices. If you have, I mean, in a smartphone, the smart part are the, is the content. Uh, so this is really important also to have this in mind when you see in terms of revenue and where and why we should promote uh, artists and their works and uh, where the money is, um, is getting back. And the, uh, the, the last one is for advertising. Uh, um, as you see, the digital revenues and digital design provide 50% of CCI's volume worldwide. And it's growing. So this is... The digital impact uh, on the CCI is really uh, um, something that is moving all the sectors. There's also something we wanted to focus on is but the cultural differences uh, for the cultural and creative sectors. What is very interesting in comparison to other sectors is that um, there are more young people in these creative and uh, uh, cultural sectors than in any other uh, sectors. So the 15 to 29 years old uh, are get more job in, in those sectors. So um, as you know, that's, um, especially um, in Europe, this is a big, big issue, the um, employment for young people. So uh, this is something we have to look uh, very uh, specifically and to, to focus on because uh, it has been, um, and this is a worldwide study, uh, so you, you see that everywhere um, young people are um, significantly uh, employed more in, in sectors than any other one. Creation also is driven by small businesses and individuals. As you know, the, um, the end of the crisis in the US was driven by individuals and entrepreneurs. 30 million people, jobs were created by individual and creative entrepreneurs in the US after the 2008 crisis. And this is very important to see that these sectors also are, because we also, we always think about major big companies and worldwide major um, in the music industry, in the movie, but no, these sectors are for real people in real life too, and it employs a, a, lot, of, um, a lot of individuals. This is also a very inclusive uh, sector and uh, more than 50% are, are women in, in this sector. 
And uh, there's something also uh, we wanted to, to, to focus on because it sounds weird, but the informal, the underground economy is definitely an economy. I'm not talking about piracy, which is something really forbidden and uh, that um, we fight against. But when I'm talking about informal um, uh, economy, it's definitely all what we find in the circular economy so far that we cannot count yet. But uh, with the uh, EY guys, we, um, we try to focus and to, to, to make something about that. And so this is something we, 1.2 million jobs is uh, something important. So we, we wanted to, um, to get a, a hint or flavor of what was going on behind that. And this is especially true um, in, in the Middle East, in, in, in Africa. So uh, this is in very, very important sectors. In terms of cities and where things happen, we have both, uh, we, we have uh, also some very interesting trends. Um, the first one is about local attractiveness. You know that for sure that uh, tourists are attractive, uh, attracted by culture. Of course, they, they don't come um, only just uh, for, um, for business when they travel. Of course, business is a very important thing uh, to, uh, um, as an attractiveness, but tourists do come for culture. And uh, uh, this is the main point. And to talk about, the, uh, to talk about France, which is, um, as you know, Paris is the first uh, destination of uh, worldwide uh, for tourists. Without culture, that would be um, less true. Um, an, uh, another point which is uh, rather important is for the middle class, uh, a growing middle class in emerging countries. We, we see that and uh, um, that those, this middle class is really looking for cultural contents. And this is very important because it shows that uh, we have a lot of business and a lot of things that are going to happen in the future because it's really the need and the... Um, and, the, and the studies, and once again, if you want to go in deeper details to see where it, it happens, um, you will see all the businesses that you're going to be able to make with this, uh, with this new land of uh, people on cultural, um, on cultural and creative contents. Another, the, the, third, the third point is definitely about the creative class uh, as uh, talent is uh, the the blood of uh, cultural and creative uh, industries. And this is every one of you. This is the way you were trained. And, the, the, um, and especially in, an, in a city where more than 50% uh, of the people are not coming from uh, Toronto, um, but from everywhere in the world, all your specific culture and who you are is really, uh, and the talent you have is really something that um, the cultural and creative uh, industries are uh, uh, focusing on. And this is, once again, the blood of uh, what um, makes it alive. And uh, as you know, see, there's plenty of um, art history and uh, um, the urban regeneration. And, uh, and, uh, and you see that, of course, in Toronto since 2002, where you have uh, all those uh, new museums and all these new uh, buildings growing up, and this is something very trendy of the beginning of the 21st century to have this uh, urban regeneration by having patrimony, by having uh, museums made by uh, great architects, and not only having uh, you know buildings to do buildings, but to make flagships all over the world. But flagship, but uh, flagship once again is is not enough. You need to have um, a global policy to make it uh, to make it happen. This phenomenon is really huge. Uh, as I as I said uh, previously, I mean there are, it's all over the planet that uh, your that the cultural and creative industries are um, going um, are growing. They have massive investment in uh, Gulf countries just for couple of, uh, just for this year. The Louvre Abu Dhabi will open uh, its door in 2006. In 2007, there is a Museum of Future in Dubai with an incubator of uh, design and innovation uh, in the art fields. Um, in China, in 10 years, the numbers of museums has doubled 
today in China, you have more than 4,000 museums, and it's growing every day. So this is really, this is happening now. It's not uh, in the future, it's not, this is really happening now. Today, seven out of the 10 first museums worldwide are Europeans, three of them are French. Um, the question these museums have, how they're going to stay in the top 10 in the next years, and what do they have to do? So this is a huge challenge to attract people and to, uh, to make the new change when you, you see that the, this phenomenon is definitely not something that you find on a country, but it's really a worldwide um, approach. So the competition is, um, is being uh, very, very tough. What are the, uh, the five main challenges that culture and creative industry have to face? Like any business, of course, they are looking for growth. This is not uh, something, uh, but, uh, but you know that uh, uh, it's not surprising at all, but uh, definitely um, these uh, sectors are, do not have um, double digit growth, but they have growth since the last 30 years. So what is important, and especially in, um, in a world where um, the circular economy is getting bigger and stronger, it's very important to focus on even small growth, because small growth is still growth, and it's jobs, and it's people, and in these fields, once again, it's something that um, makes people really um, be be um, be together. So the look for growth is uh, looking for growth is really something that uh, is a big challenge. But um, as we saw as we saw previously, the digital uh, the digital impact is helping um, the um, the sectors to to grow. The second one is of course to 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 go in um, to to pursue global expansion and emerging markets, and uh, we see that um, in Europe, all the big groups are really focusing on the Middle East and the African, uh, the Africa continent. It's amazing the investment that are being doing there because they really see it as the, it's a new place to be and to do and to do some business. And cultural and creative sectors are really um, looking forward to this, this new growth. The third one, is how to balance online monetization. You know for sure that a couple of years ago, everybody was saying that uh, we're going to digital monetization is going to be fantastic and uh, all the revenue are going, and you know for sure that it's not true. Um, so the, the balance between online and physical monetization is really still a, a big struggle. A lot of people are gonna die um, but um, it's, um, we're still in the middle of the, uh, of the river um, concerning the, um, the online monetization. Not all the business models are not ready yet, especially in the newspaper industries or in other, um, in still in music, or it's still not, um, the balance is still not good yet, but it's, um, I mean, all those, uh, sectors are really working on that and uh, globally it's getting better. The fourth, the fourth challenge is, and we, I talked about that before, nurturing talent. Talent, once again, is the creative class um, and the creative class are the lifeblood uh, of ICC. I'm really insist insisting on that because uh, really, usually people don't really have in mind that what gets out of their mind has a lot of value. And where they are from and the way they were trained is really um, something that has to be protected and um, defended. So um, I, I'm just gonna give you a, 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 a quick example. I was talking to, uh, to, um, to, to, to a guy in, in Europe who is dealing with the video games uh, industry. He's the chairman of the syndicate in, uh, in Europe about video games. And 80, between 18 and 19 percent of, uh, uh, of his revenue um, is done out of Europe. So I say 
why do you stay in Europe? And he said, you know, because a lot of talent in the video games industry are, have been trained in Europe. So still we have a lot of creativity and uh, that's why we want to stay um, in, in Europe so far. So in the in those sectors, and once again, 30 million jobs, creativity, talent, and what's get out of your mind is really the, the most important factor. And the fifth challenge is definitely about promoting authors' rights, which is linked to, to, to the fourth point. Um, author, authors, creators must be compensating fairly for the use of their work. I mean, it's not fair that uh, uh, everything is going in the um, um, in hardware. It definitely has to go uh, to the people who are uh, doing the invention. So th this is a big, big challenge that we have to face because uh, the, once again, the balance so far is uh, not, um, not uh, always in a good position. Very quickly to tell you um, What's up in France? You see that it was 2,250 2, billion revenue. In France, it's almost 84 billion revenues. It's 1.3 million jobs. And uh, the growth is 1.2 growth uh, of the revenue. As I said previously, this might not seem huge or wow, it's not the wow effect. But it is growth, and this is very important to, um, to, uh, to have this in mind. In, in France, this is twice, the number of uh, jobs are twice as in the automotive sector. So it's, uh, and more than uh, it's in the chemistry sectors and, uh, and so on. CCI and jobs diversity are um, not only um, in big capitals, or only Paris or Rome um, or London. It's all over the places, and this is also a very important factor for every um, every sectors. Um, why I'm saying that and insist insisting on that because um, most of the time people say, "Oh well, this industry, but it's not for me." When I'm a smaller city or when I'm not. Uh, the big capital of the uh, of the country. It's not true. Culture is everywhere, and the creation and creativity is on all the territories. And digital, um, um, but two, I mean, two very very important points to be stressed. Um, the first one is that digital is a good um, growth uh, factor, but it's not enough. So far in France, the, um, the sales, the digital sales for cultural and creative sectors um, have been plus 214 million euros. But, and the, but the, the physical sales have been backward minus 716 million euros. So you see when I was talking about the balance in between physical sales and digital sales, it's still not in favor uh, globally um, of, uh, of the, uh, I mean, the digital sales do not compensate the lack of uh, uh, physical sales. Made in France culture is quite attractive because plus the 80, 84 million euros uh, of revenues, you have around 33 million euros for tourism based on the cultural, uh, cultural tourism. Um, in, in France, and uh, um, it's a lot of exportation too. It's around 1,000 different type of jobs uh, that you have in uh, cultural and creative, creative industries. Usually people have 11 sectors in mind, but it's really a lot of different, um, different jobs, uh, so everybody uh, could, uh, can be involved. And um, what I said previously is that culture is not only in capital, is not only in Paris. Uh, for example, in France, almost 60% of, um, of jobs in uh, theater 
industry uh, are not in Paris, and 90% of the festivals are, uh, of music are not in Paris. So you see it's really uh, all, over, uh, all over the country. The, it's a good, I mean, we've seen that, of course. Uh, it's a good economic health supported by a strong, very strong, and uh, always growing desire for culture. Oh, this is something we see in uh, all the studies we're making. People want always more culture. So this is good news. Um, and um, we, we work on that to... Um, to to do all the, um, all the analyses and to help all the sectors to, to, to grow. Okay. One of the specificity that we have uh, maybe in France um, that, you should, um, that, that you should have in mind is that you have uh, in Mexico, Italy, France, and in uh, some uh, other countries, culture is mostly public funded. Uh, there's all, uh, of course, it's, uh, the majority of the, um, of the funding is private, but a lot of, uh, of public fundings um, happen in the uh, cultural and creative industries in those, uh, in those countries. Whereas, as you know, in North America and uh, in the UK, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the, the opposite. Uh, um, way of, uh, of uh, funding culture. And as you know, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what the actors are scared about so far is that you have less and less fundings and public fundings, and we don't, they don't have yet um, the new economic models for, uh, private, uh, from private fundings. So we are at a time for cultural and creative sectors where it's a huge economy, it's very important for, um, for the country, but we still have a lot of challenges to, um, to, to, to face, especially um, regarding uh, the way public fundings are going to diminish and when are going to private fundings going to, um, to rise. Well, basically that's... Uh, all about uh, what I wanted to, to tell you today. So if you have um, any questions or any specific uh, points you want to, uh, to discuss about... Um Thank you, Laura. Round of applause. Merci beaucoup. We will have a...